Disney's newest cruise ship is doing something they've never done before. They are bringing the theme parks to the seas. Find out why the Disney treasure might just be Disney's best cruise ship yet for those of us who are parks fans and when you get to step aboard. Today on DFE Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. All right, so Disney Cruise Line's newest ship, the Disney Treasure, is the sixth ship in the Disney Cruise Line fleet. With new restaurants, awesome new lounges, some very unique rooms, all this stuff has just been announced. The Treasure is gonna be a little bit different than Disney's other cruise ships, though you'll notice a lot of similarities to the Disney Wish. Now y'all know I'm in my cruise era right now, so I'm super excited to share all of this with you. We've created a completely free booklet, by the way, with all the information I'm about to share in this video, everything you need to know about the Disney treasure, or I guess everything we know so far, you can get it over at disneyfoodblog.com slash treasure so you can start planning your cruise vacation. All right, ready to jump into all the news? I am. I can't wait to tell you about this stuff. Okay, the treasure, that's the second ship in Disney's Triton class. Those are the largest in Disney's fleet currently. And the first ship was the Disney Wish, which launched last year. While the two ships share some similarities in restaurants and layout, there are some major differences too. And if you're looking to vacation on one of those new ships, you might wanna wait a little bit longer to set sail if you prefer the Jungle Cruise over Star Wars. While the Disney Wish is known as Disney's Castle on the Seas, Disney's shared that the Disney treasure is celebrating Walt Disney Disney's lifelong love of adventure. The design of the Disney treasure is inspired by the grandeur and mystery of a gilded palace, according to Disney, and it draws influences from Asia and Africa and even Aladdin's Agrabah. In the Grand Hall, you're gonna be greeted by a statue of Aladdin and Jasmine and magic carpet. State rooms are gonna feature designs from Disney and Pixar films, including Aladdin, Pocahontas, Up, and Encanto, and suites include elements from The Jungle Book and The Lion King. The massive two-story ultra luxe suite is an ode to Epcot. That's right, they have an Epcot suite on this ship. Oh my goodness, you guys, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So dining is gonna edit, let's move on to dining, sorry. <laughs> I'm just very excited about this Epcot situation. All right, dining is gonna feature restaurants we've experienced on The Wish. There's gonna be 1923, that's gonna be back on The Treasure. Worlds of Marvel is coming back on The Treasure. Enchante and the Palo Steakhouse will both be on The Treasure. But there's going to be a brand new Coco themed restaurant on the Disney treasure. That's going to be in place of what is currently the Frozen restaurant, the Arendelle restaurant over on the Wish. So the Wish will keep Arendelle and the treasure will transform it into Coco. Now there are going to be new lounges inspired by the Jungle Cruise and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and a new sweets shop featuring characters from Zootopia. Captain Minnie even has a brand new look on this ship for her adventure your theme as well. Okay, we're gonna dive a little bit more into the restaurants here because I wanna give you some specific details. As I said, there's some overlap between the restaurants you're gonna find on The Wish and The Treasure. Most Disney ships in the same class share a lot of the same details, but The Treasure does have some very unique new dining that I'm really excited about. Let's start with the rotational dining restaurants. These are the main dining rooms that are included in the price of your cruise, and you're gonna rotate through them as the cruise progresses, but your crew of servers will rotate with you, so they get to know your group and your dining preferences. Starting with 1920, 1923 debuted on The Wish with two sides to the dining room dedicated to Walt and Roy Disney. So this dining room is inspired by the golden age of Hollywood with original animation panels and movie props. It's got a bit of an upscale feel without being too fussy, though kids will likely prefer the other two dining options a lot more. The menu is California-inspired cuisine with pastas, seafood, and steak. Worlds of Marvel, this is another restaurant that debuted on The Wish, though things may be a little different storyline-wise aboard the treasure. Aboard initial seven-night cruises, there will be two nights in Worlds of Marvel that will feature their own individual shows and dinner menus presenting cuisine inspired by the Marvel Cinematic Universe while celebrating characters and stories of the Avengers. We're hearing a little something about an interaction with Spider-Man as well. 
Now, Plaza de Coco, this will be a new Disney Cruise Line restaurant themed to Disney and Pixar's Coco. There will be musical performances by a mariachi band who will sing songs from the movie. And this is a character restaurant, so you'll get to see Miguel and his family as their story continues from where it ended in the film. The food will be traditional Mexican cuisine with a modern twist. On those seven-night cruises, guests will get two evenings at Plaza de Coco to experience the shows which are presented in a theater-in-the-round environment focused on a central stage. Stage, same way it is at Arendelle on the Wish. So let's move on to specialty dining. Aside from the rotational dining restaurants, the Treasure will also have the Palo Steakhouse and Enchante. Those are the adults only restaurants. And those are both also on the Wish. To dine in these specialty restaurants, you'll need to make advanced dining reservations and pay an extra fee. These are your fancy grown ups only restaurants that come with a dress code. In addition to these two dining rooms, you'll also find the Rose, which is the lounge for before and after dinner cocktails. So the whole thing is themed to Beauty and the Beast, as you can see, because Palo Steakhouse is actually Cogsworth themed, Enchante is Lumiere themed, and the Rose, of course, is the Rose themed. <laughs> now, quick eats aboard the Treasure look very similar to what you're going to find on the wish mickey and friends festival of foods is available as a counter service option it's usually there on the pool deck so this area has five themed food stalls mickey's smokestack barbecue which is my favorite donald's cantina goofy's grill minnie's delights and daisy's pizza pie marceline market is also returning to the treasure that's gonna be the popular buffet spot we were initially introduced to on the Disney Wish, which offers multiple marketplaces with dishes and entrees inspired by cultures and cuisine from around the world. 10 food stations make up the food hall, each with a different theme. Now, basically, because it's Marceline Market, that's based on Walt Disney's hometown of Marceline, Missouri. And what you're gonna see throughout this buffet area is kind of subtle references to old and new Disney films. It's very, very, very fun. I really like what they did with it. This replaces what's Cabana's on the Wonder and the Magic and the Dream and the Fantasy. So Marceline Market is the Cabana's of the bigger ships. Now the sweets shop aboard the Treasure is Zootopia themed. This is called Jumbo's Sweets and it'll have handmade gelato, ice creams, and sorbets. It's themed after the ice cream shop featured in Zootopia and will be candy colored and decorated to fit the sweet mood. Be sure to also check out the statue of Judy Hopps and Nick Wilde. That'll be a fun one for photo ops. Lounges might be the most exciting new additions here on the Treasure. Disney confirmed that there will not be a Star Wars hyperspace lounge on the Treasure like there is on the Wish, but they have some other unique options in store. Disney is bringing the parks on board in a big way. There's a Skipper Society lounge near the Grand Hall, which is a Jungle Cruise themed hangout. This this is in the same place where you'll find the Bayou, which is the Tiana themed lounge over on the Wish. And as you might expect, there will be all kinds of puns in this lounge. Disney said that the venue is going to have natural colorways and camp style furnishing, along with trusty dry witted skippers. You'll be able to grab a variety of drinks and small plates, all served by cast members who truly take on the role of a skipper to provide you with some comical entertainment. Now, on the Wish, they do have some live music and performances here, so I'm looking forward to potentially the same at the Skipper Society Lounge. Another lounge that's coming to the treasure is the Periscope Pub. This is inspired by Disney's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The rendering that Disney showed us makes it look like the inside of a submarine. Disney stated that the submarine-styled interiors will give guests a look at the watery world below through an intriguing glass ceiling, and you'll find craft brews and light bites here. Now, the location on the treasure will be the same place where you can find keg and compass on the wish which has a pretty robust menu so i'm excited to see what periscope is going to offer there's also the jade cricket cafe which is inspired by disney's mulan and the moana themed hey hey cafe those are going to be the coffee bars on two of the decks of course if none of these restaurants appeal to you or if you need a late night snack during your trip there's always the 24-hour room service available Okay, let's move on to those staterooms. The Disney Treasure will be able to carry 4,000 passengers with 1,256 staterooms. 1,133, that's 90% of the staterooms on the Disney Treasure will be outside staterooms, and these divvy up into two types. 948 of them are gonna be veranda staterooms, and 185 will be ocean view staterooms. 123 inside staterooms will make up the final 10% of traditional rooms. 451 of the staterooms will offer connecting doors, and all will have Disney Cruise Line's signature split bath concept. In addition to the staterooms above, there will be concierge suites, 
Suites for Royal Suites and the Tomorrow Tower Suite, which will be located in the ship's forward funnel. That's the Epcot one. All of the non-suite rooms will feature custom artwork and design elements with nods to Disney and Pixar films, including Aladdin, Pocahontas, Up, and Encanto. And what they do on The Wish is each room is themed to one of those films. So you're not going to get all of those films in a big mashup in your room. It's going to be one of those will be the theme of your particular room. And passengers sailing in concierge level staterooms will have access to an exclusive concierge lounge with a private sun deck. Concierge level suites will have design elements inspired by The Lion King. Four royal suites will celebrate Disney's felines from the films The Lion King, The Jungle Book, and Aladdin. These rooms will include the Bagheera Royal Suites, the panther from the Jungle Book, and the Raja Royal Suites themed to Princess Jasmine's tiger from Aladdin. Now let's talk about that Epcot suite. Located in the ship's forward funnel, the Tomorrow Tower Suite will overlook the top deck of the Disney treasure with views from its two-story window. This luxe suite will capture the essence of Epcot with futuristic elements reminiscent of the park's world discovery neighborhood. The Tomorrow Tower Suite boasts almost 2,000 square feet of living space and will be able to comfortably accommodate eight guests. This is similar to the Tower Suite on The Wish, which features two king bedrooms, a children's bunk room, four and a half baths, a living room, dining room, and library, which also turns into a bedroom. Now, on every Disney Cruise Line ship, the Walt Disney Theater is home to original Broadway-style shows developed exclusively for Disney Cruise Line. On the Disney Treasure, the featured productions will be Beauty and the Beast and Disney Sees the Adventure. Beauty and the Beast, of course, brings Belle's story to life with elements from both the live action and the classic animated films. Disney Sees the Adventure is an original musical production starring Disney and Pixar pals and featuring Disney songs. Now, Disney shares that more details about a third all-new show coming to the Disney Treasure will be released soon. You'll also find movie theaters aboard. The Wonderland and Neverland cinemas offer passengers the opportunity to catch first-run films from Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilm, and more. The Hero Zone, which made its debut on the Disney Wish, is a sports and recreation venue custom-made for active family time, complete with physical challenges and game show-style competitions. And thankfully, a lot of this is indoors as well, which is nice because on the other ships, it's kind of all outdoors. Inspired by the Lion King, the Sarabi area will act as a hub for family entertainment. This is a two-story space, and it's where Disney says families can come together to experience game shows, cruise classics, silent discos, and more. In the daytime, you'll be able to experience family activities, while at night, the area will transform to host adult entertainment. Adults can also enjoy Senses Spa. This space will feature private treatment rooms and spa villas, as well as steam and aromatherapy rooms, and the reimagined Senses Fitness will be completely complete with state-of-the-art exercise equipment. There are some more adults-only spaces that I'll talk about in just a second, so hold tight. Now, kids' clubs are the same as what you're going to find on The Wish. First, there's the Marvel Superhero Academy, where youngsters train to be the next generation of superheroes by learning the ropes from friends like Spider-Man, Black Panther, Ant-Man, and the Wasp. Another experience is over in Fairy Tale Hall, a group of activity rooms themed to honor some iconic Disney ladies who may just happen to stop by, Rapunzel's Art Studio for Arts and Crafts, Belle's Library with the chance to read and act out stories, and more. The Oceaneer Club will also contain the Walt Disney Imagineering Lab, where kids discover the secrets of world-renowned Disney Imagineers through some hands-on activities and experiments. Over in Star Wars Cargo Bay, kids take on the role of creature handlers and help take care of Star Wars creatures. And Mickey and Minnie's Captain's Deck features a nautical-themed playground filled with sensory games and activities. Now, since the fantasy is built with the same blueprints as the Wish, we're assuming they're still going to have that slide down from the Grand Hall into the kids' clubs. I hope they do, because that's really, really fun. Now, let's talk pools. The Aqua Mouse is back. This is a water coaster that originally appeared aboard the Disney Wish. Now, the Disney Treasure will have the same water coaster, but it will debut with an all-new show to accompany the ride called Golden Egg. You'll encounter Disney characters and sea creatures alike in a water coaster-like ride that loops two riders at a time, 760 feet around the upper deck and even over the side of the ship. Now, the Golden Egg is Donald-themed, and it's also eventually going to be available aboard the Wish for a total of three stories you can experience on this ride on both ships. Along with the Aqua Mouse, the upper decks of the Disney Treasure will feature three distinct districts with a total of seven pools. Among the water features will be a Toy Story themed district like that aboard the Disney Wish for families with toddlers and little ones with a splash zone and wading pool and family water slide and smoothie bar. 
And adults specifically can enjoy the secluded quiet cove aboard the treasure as well. That's the one with that gorgeous infinity pool, poolside bar, and a cafe. So no matter what kind of pool experience you're looking for on the treasure, you're going to be able to find it. There's even a sensory friendly pool way at the front of the ship, which is very, very hard to get to. And a lot of people don't know it's there. It's usually much quieter than the rest. So when will it set sail? Well, the Disney treasure will officially set sail with guests on board starting December 21st, 2024. That's earlier than Disney's original debut date of 2025. The treasure's maiden voyage will be a seven night Eastern Caribbean cruise from Port Canaveral, Florida. And the ship will have an inaugural season made up of seven night voyages to the Eastern and Western Caribbean. Disney may add other destinations and voyage links such as three and four night cruises later on, but for the beginning, it'll be a seven nighter. Disney Cruise Line Castaway Club members can book their spot as early as September 12th, 2023, and bookings open to everyone on September 20th, 2023. If you want to be one of the first to sail on Disney's newest ship and you want to avoid the headache that comes with the first day bookings, we highly recommend reaching out to our friends at Small World Vacations. These are those full-time professional agents who specialize in Disney vacations and especially Disney Cruise Line. They seriously know their stuff over there. I'll drop a link below this video if you want to reach out to them to get your name on the list for when bookings open. So we expect Disney to release more news about the Disney treasure, like the details about that hinted and rumored Haunted Mansion addition to the ship. Could it be another themed lounge? Could it go where hyperspace lounge is? I don't know. Plus, we'll get those full itineraries and pricing soon. So if you want to stay up to date on all the latest Disney Cruise Line news, be sure to sign up for our free newsletter. We'll get that info sent right to your inbox as soon as it's released. And don't forget to grab our free booklet with all that information about the Disney treasure at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash treasure so you can start planning too. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.